Trevor Maddich of College Game Day Radio, 12 to 7 this afternoon on Saturday, uh, right here on ESPN Radio 104.5, the team. It's Armin and Levac. Trevor, thanks for your time today. Urban Meyer, Ohio State, they go with Cardell Jones as their starting quarterback. Was that the right move? It was the right move, but they need to use him like they used him last year. Last year, when he came in for those last three games, they didn't ask him to decode defenses. It was basically throw the ball up and over everybody on deep passes, or if he saw somebody underneath and that he was open and he could just gun it to him with that, that arm, then gun it to him. But if he did not know what he saw or if he didn't like what he saw, the plan last year was this. Solve the problem with your feet, not your head. That kept him out of trouble. This year, he's been trying to decode defenses, and he's throwing interceptions, and he's, he's slowing down his thinking process because of it, and the offense is suffering because of it. He's the right call because of that big arm, and that if he can hit those passes like he did last year, it'll open things up for the rest of the offense. But he's got to stop trying to be an NFL quarterback and go back to being the college quarterback that he was last year. And if he likes what he sees, take it. If he's not sure... Solve the problem with his feet, not his head. And so if they do that, then the offense will get back on track. How much of the problem is that they, they don't have Devin Smith blowing the top off of that defense anymore, that, that burner who can get deep every play? Yeah, it hurts to lose him, although they do have plenty of talent. Jalen Marshall and other guys, Braxton Miller now with his speed at wide receiver. Uh, but it's not all the quarterback. And you're right, you're right to, to think about where other problems might be. Because I went back and watched that Northern Illinois tape. And the offensive line was not blocking well. They were getting beat at the point of attack. They were not counting numbers correctly. They were not accounting for safeties on the side that they were trying to run options to. So they had extra guys there that were unblocked. There were all kinds of issues that were going on. As a matter of fact, looking at Northern Illinois beyond the quarterback, just other guys on the offense, it looked like Ohio State was a, it had all the parts for a Ferrari, but they were not assembled well. So you'd look like a Ferrari, but the wheels would wobble and the steering wheel was loose. And it just it didn't hum like that race car they had last year. And you can just take four plays from the Northern Illinois game where they failed to even execute from the snap through the handoff. One was a bad snap. One was a snap that the quarterback thought was bad, but it wasn't. So he freaked out and he ended up out of position for the handoff and they fumbled the ball. Another one, the snap was perfect, hit Braxton Miller as a wildcat in the chest, but he dropped it and hit the ground. Another one was a perfect snap. The quarterback fielded it well, tried to hand it off to Braxton Miller, but Braxton Miller's arms were in the wrong position, and Braxton himself knocked the ball out of his own belly, and it was another fumble. That's four plays in one game that they couldn't even execute the snap through the exchange. And that's not all on the quarterback. That's spread around between the center, the wildcat, all kinds of stuff. So this, this, this offense needs to tighten up, but it must start with the quarterback position or the rest of it won't. Trevor Maddich will be right here on 104.5 The Team ESPN Radio tomorrow at 12 noon as part of the College Game Day Radio broadcast. Tra- uh, Trevor, uh, Leonard Fournette of LSU put himself on the map Uh, last weekend because of his dominating performance. Should he be the favorite to win the Heisman just because of what he did last week? Well, I think he is, and not just because of of, he's fast, he's big, that's fine, but it goes beyond that. The the way he he imposes his violence on tacklers is so much fun to watch. I mean, yeah, okay, he's got speed, he can run past people. He's a big back, he can run over people, all that. We've seen that before. But at the end of, of runs where... His journey is over now. He's going to be forced out of bounds. He's surrounded. He's going to be tackled. He will single out a defender and throw an elbow or a forearm or a, or a palm of his hand into that guy's fist or face, into his neck. You know, he would drive him into the ground and just have that little bit of mischievous fun at the end of runs. And that adds up to an extra level of entertainment value that'll get him onto the highlights, that'll make people remember and emotionally connect with the runs that he makes. And all those things are important to break through and win the Heisman. I I think Syracuse fans are going to have a a real treat to be able to see one of the greatest players in recent memory play. Now, I think the Syracuse players 
we'll have a different experience, but uh, but it'll be an amazing thing for the fans to see him up close. We've got we've got two of our producers who are from the Syracuse area who are both clad head to toe in orange today and are, are actually trying to convince other people that Syracuse will upset LSU. Well, bust their hearts, um, <laughs> as they say down south. Uh, you know, here, well, here's their chance. Well, first of all, you know the. When you're working on your third string quarterback, it's uh, it's, it's kind of tough against this kind of a defense. But here's their chance. The defense for Syracuse has been really salty. I mean, really salty. The D line has done a good job of eating up blockers so the linebackers can run free, and they will load up that line. They will do their best to limit Leonard Fournette and hope that Brandon Harris, the LSU quarterback, is not yet ready for prime time, and he makes some mistakes and throws some picks. That's what they have to hope for. But the thing is, that defense is salty enough to, to give them a chance that way. I, I have great respect with the way those guys are flying around. Trevor Maddich, College Game Day Radio. Speaking of upsets, Trevor, uh, my alma mater, Texas Tech, hosting number 3 TCU. That spread is about eight points and closing in. What are the odds that my team can take down the nasty Horn Frogs? Well, your team, first of all, was fun. But we were out there in Lubbock, you and I. Yes. I mean, it's tremendous fun to watch because at the time, Mike Leach was the head coach. Yep. And he was the pirate, right? He had this whole big pirate culture going on. <laughs> and and fans, the students, would all dress up like pirates at the games. It's it was nuts. like Halloween every week, man. It was tremendous fun, right? Yeah. Uh, I think TCU's got to be careful. You know, they want to make the playoff. And their defense right now might be, uh, well, is their Achilles heel because – they have five starters injured now for the season. An- another key contributor has been suspended. Another guy might not play. They might have as many as seven starters out for this game for various reasons. Texas Tech's offense is a bit of a revelation. I mean, it was fun to go back and watch the tape of last week's game against uh, Arkansas. Arkansas thought they would just pound Texas Tech because, of course, Texas Tech is that little spread team, the finesse guys that run around, and if you catch them, you can pound them, right? Not so fast. Arkansas couldn't catch Texas Tech. But when it was time to get physical, it was Texas Tech's offense that looked like the SEC offense. I mean, their quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, threw a block on an Arkansas defensive back. I mean, the quarterback threw a block. And that defensive back ended up airborne like Superman. He was about three feet off the ground, totally parallel with the ground, facing the ground, flying through the air while the while the play was still going on and then other plays where little texas tech little fancy finesse air raid guys would would hammer arkansas defenders and pound them into the ground and then stand over them you know it was it was really interesting to watch and so all this means that with the depleted nature of the tcu defense and this texas tech offense with the biggest confidence boost you can imagine this this i expect to be a big shootout and in a shootout in lubbock is not a situation you want to be in. Remember Texas a few years ago where Michael Crabtree caught that last pass to, to beat the Longhorns? Yes, you know, he remembers. I mean, this could be another <laughs> game like that for the Red Raiders, and it would throw the playoff hunt from the Big 12's perspective into a huge, uh, a huge, you know, change. Guns up, baby. I love it. All right. Now, one of the Guns biggest – Oh, man, you, you just made his weekend. One of the biggest stories in college football is, is Harbaugh at Michigan. How long until Michigan is, you know, in the class of the Ohio States and the Michigan States? Well, it'll be a little while before they're there. But Harbaugh has got him, got him he's in a really good place right now. I mean, there's good talent on that team. They've got some holes in that roster, especially at a wide receiver and a quarterback. But the defense is really good. The running game's coming around. Jake Butt's a really good tight end. The, uh, the the thing is, though, he, he's already brought that toughness back. I visited Ann Arbor in the off season and didn't get to speak to Harbaugh, but I, I listened to him speak to a high school camp that was going on, hundreds of high school football players, and I was standing backstage with former uh, Wolverine players. And Harbaugh was talking about toughness in terms that were so brutally stark that the former Wolverine players and I were looking at each other with our eyes bugging out of our heads. I mean, NFL guys, you know, former NFL guys. And we were loving it. It was great, but it was like, you don't hear people talk like this. And he was out there talking to hundreds of high school players. And he's brought that kind of toughness. And what, what those Wolverines told me was that they see a lot of Bo Beckler in Jim Harbaugh. They said that a lot of times when they played for Beckler, 
they they didn't like it. They, they matter of fact, sometimes they hated it. But especially once they left, they loved it, and they loved Shem Beckler because they realized that he made them the best they could possibly be. He got everything out of them, and they loved him for it, and they see the same quality in Harbaugh. What Harbaugh's got to watch out for uh, is, and what he's got to overcome, let's say, is that Michigan has lost its advantage. It used to be that you roll into a, a top recruit's home, and you're wearing that, that, that block M on your hat, and if he's a top recruit and you're Michigan and you say, I want you, he's either going to Ohio State or Michigan, and that's it. And yeah. you have a really good chance of getting him. Yeah. Well, now Michigan State, just down the road, is the team that that's in the mix that's also drawing those recruits. So Ohio State is ahead of Michigan right now in getting those recruits. And so is Michigan State. So Michigan has got to be in more of a developmental mode and get players that might not be – all the top guys that they got in the past, and then they got to coach them up and build back to where they're winning again before they can waltz in and regain that mojo. And that that's the that's what they've got to overcome. Trevor Maddich of ESPN Radio. Trevor, who's the one college football program in the country that's an underdog for the college football playoff that might not be on our radar, but maybe should? Is is Notre Dame on your radar? It, it's eh. it's blinking. It's out there on the on the out the outline. Yeah. Actually, Notre Dame and Georgia Tech were my two dark horses to get there. And even though Notre Dame has had epic injuries, I mean they lost their starting running back, starting quarterback, starting tight end, starting nose guard, starting nickel, nickel back, uh, defensive back. They've been able to replace those guys, and even a quarterback, uh, Deshaun Kaiser, has been fantastic. And they can't afford to lose anybody else. But Notre Dame has a really good shot of running this table. And the te- one of the teams, though, that I – people are always looking at TCU in the Big 12. I've got Baylor Baylor, Baylor now winning it all. Ooh. Preseason, I picked Baylor to win it all. Now, I'm a little concerned about their defense not starting until halftime. But the offense is as good as it's ever been. And Seth Russell is a kind of a hybrid of – Bryce Petty's arm, and Bryce Petty last year's quarterback was now, I believe, a New York Jet, mm-hmm. and RG3's mobility. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he's able to combine those two things mean this offense should be able to outscore anybody in the country. So watch out for Baylor sneaking up from their poor non-conference schedule to cause some, cause some noise in the playoffs. College Game Day Radio tomorrow starting at 12 noon. You'll hear this man, Trevor Maddich, right here on 104.5 The Team, ESPN Radio, at Team Maddich on Twitter as well. Trevor, it was good catching up with you again, man. Thanks so much for your time today and have fun this weekend. Great to talk to you and guns up, and I hope you still have your pirate sword, man. (laughs) Woo, let's go, baby. I'm ready.